thrilled to welcome to the show Mr. Eddie Murphy. There he is. Look at this guy. Eddie, it is so good to see you. What, are you are you zooming in from church? Is that where you are? Are you at church? No, I'm I'm in the uh, the lounge by the bowling alley downstairs. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I get it. You've done well. I get it. Yeah. Hey, you, you asked. You asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine, I just can't ever foresee a time in my life where I'll be on a Zoom and I'll go, I'm by the bowling alley. I think you have a bowling alley in your future, James. Yes. You, honestly? You now, have an in-house bowling alley. You have that type of talent that I see an in-house bowling alley in You think I've got future. bowling alley talent? <laughs> honestly? Yes. House bowling alley talent. I, yeah. I never, I never have considered myself with bowling alley talent. I've always thought I've got like, I think I've got like, walk-in pantry talent. Do you oh, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's good. I'd settle for that. I'd settle for that. I really would. What else is down there with the bowling alley? Oh, you, uh, on the recreation level. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, uh... Have I got no it's wait? Hang on, nice, answer this. Have I nice got down here. have I got recreation level talent or just bowling at alley talent? Recreation level. No, come on. <laughs> what else yeah. is down there, Eddie? What have we got down there? There's a uh, there's an arcade. There's a really nice arcade down here. that's like you would find in a mall, and uh, it's, a, uh, it's a movie theater over here, and it's like a little club area where you know, like the, you remember that movie The Jerk, where he had like a, yeah. a little in house club. <laughs> I have a jerk club. <laughs> wow. See, I, I wouldn't be surprised if someone said to me that I had jerk level talent, but I don't think that's what they mean. Now, Eddie, I cannot tell you, we, this is show 888 for us, and this is honestly the first time I feel like I've been in awe of a guest on the show. I can't tell you, I've been such a fan of yours for so long, uh, you, your work means so much to me and so many people here in this studio. But I, what I didn't realize is you started doing stand-up when you were 15, which I can't get my yeah. head around. What sort of shows are you booking at 15? Bars, there was uh, bars and stuff back. Back when I started, there was a show called The Gong Show. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, that made a bunch of local bars started having gong show night. So it was all these gong show nights I could play. I started when I was about 15. So what would you... What, Mr. Hicks place, Mr. Hicks, Mr. Hicks place in the Dolphin's Cove. <laughs> and what sort of comedy are you doing at 15? What sort of material was it? You know, when I first started, I did mostly impressions. I was always a really good mimic. And uh, when I first started, that's all I did was impressions. So this is how long ago it was. I, I did a Jimmy Carter impression. That, that was the present. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how old I am. <laughs> so Jimmy Carter and Muhammad Ali and Howard Cosell. And, you know, mostly impressions. And were you, were, you, were you brilliant right out of the gate? Or did, did you ever have moments where you, where you bombed in those early days? Oh, yeah, everybody, you know. <laughs> I've had moments uh, that I was not brilliant, absolutely, without question. Yeah. What's not the a worst lot, you but... bombed? I can't imagine you, but what's the worst you bombed back then? Oh, gee. The worst I bombed ever was uh, maybe it, it, I opened for Melissa Manchester, and I was pretty bad that night. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I opened for Tiny Tim, and I was pretty bad that night. <laughs> That was a hard crowd. That's a hard crowd to work. The Tiny Tim's audience. Is, you know, <laughs> it's kind of hard to read. Them. <laughs> I know that uh, Richard Pryor was was a, a real influence on you, one of your biggest heroes. And I was I really love this story that you you first met Richard Pryor on an airplane. What was yeah. what was that like for you? Was he aware of you and your work as a comedian at that time? Yeah, because I had been on uh, Saturday Night Live for a year. And I met him uh, on the way from Atlanta to LA. He was on the plane. And uh, he was aware of me, but I wasn't like a big hot <laughs> yet. And he was Richard. And uh, so I, I had a, a, a copy of my album, uh, my first comedy album. I went over and I gave, I said, Mr. Pryor, I'm Eddie. And do you listen to him? I said, Oh, yeah, I know you are. And I gave him my record. And uh, he put it, this is how old it was. He put the cassette in. <laughs> 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 
them put on the headphones. I was sitting behind him and watching him listen to my record. That was my first time meeting him. So he was listening to it while you were on the plane? Now, I was like a couple of seats behind him, and you and Richard was going, ha, 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 That's what you guys be like. <laughs> that was in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that must be the greatest feeling oh, ever. Oh. Afterwards, when the plane landed, uh, he had a, uh, his driver met, the, met him at the airport with his car. And uh, he said, which way are you going? I said, I'm going to base it. Let me give you a lift. And he drove me to, to the house I was staying at. That's the way I met my idol like that. Like, oh my God. Amazing. That's, that's incredible. Because I can remember, like, we were talking about it on the show this morning. A lot of us, like, I can remember just watching over and over again, watching Raw and watching Delirious. And they, those specials meant so much to me. And I went back and watched them recently. After watching Coming to America, I went back and watched them. And they're still as brilliant. They still, it all holds up. But my biggest takeaway now is I was looking at it thinking, if I was wearing head-to-toe leather on a stage, I would be in a pool of sweat. At the yeah, end no of sweat. that, I'm no not sweating sweat. at all. No, shows. no sweat in the leather suit. I, that, uh, that's youth. I was young. <laughs> I was young, and, and I wasn't sweating a lot. <laughs> I feel like if I wore leather pants, my wife would have to roll me out of them at the end of the <laughs> night. It would be the single least erotic thing. I'd be like a sort of. She, you're right, Rich. She'd have to cut me. She'd have to cut me out of them just to release myself from the leather. Myself yeah. from the leather. <laughs> now, talking to stand up, you're, uh, the, you've been talking about this. Like, you're going back to stand up. Where, where are you with this? Is this something that's definitely going to happen? And when you do return, will the leather suit return as well? I, I don't know if I'll be wearing a leather suit, James. <laughs> <laughs> but the plan, the plan before the pandemic hit, what happened was, let's, let me go back. In 2011, I kind of kind of stopped making movies. I was yeah. like, you know, I'm take, taking a break. And uh, maybe six, seven years went by. And then I kind of, my, my batteries got recharged. And it was like, okay, I want to do stand-up again. But, but I didn't want to just pop up back out there doing stand-up, I wanted to, you know, let me do a couple of movies and remind them that I'm funny and <laughs> then do stuff. So I did Dolomite and I went back to Saturday Night Live and I did Coming to America. And right now, this last year, was supposed to be in the clubs working out an act, but the pandemic hit, so we had to push everything back a year. But as soon as it's safe for everybody to go back to be in a room, I want to, you know, do that again, you know. And then after I do that, I'm going to go back to the couch again. <laughs> <laughs> back down to the recreation level. Now, let's talk to about Coming to America. It's the number one streamed movie this year. Uh, <laughs> such a smash. For anyone who hasn't caught up with it yet, ex explain where this movie picks up. Uh, well, the original Coming to America kind of ended on a... and they lived happily ever after, like a fairy tale. And this movie is, uh, that fairy tale is uh, interrupted by a very modern problem. And that's what, that's what the movie is about. Now, your <laughs> daughter, Bella, plays one of your daughters in the movie. It's her screen debut. She does a fantastic job in the film. What was it like having her on set? And are any of your other kids, are they interested in, in acting and performing? Yeah, a lot of my kids uh, have interest in the arts and our acting and writing. And uh, being on the set with my baby girl, it's the first one of my kids to be in one of my movies. Just being on the set, you know if you have children, uh, what it's like to see your kids do, do anything. But to have them come to work with you and actually be doing, you know, contributing and doing a great job, it's, I was filled up every day just, you know, looking at her on, at work with me. I can't it, begin to imagine what that would feel like if my some. You feel like your heart is going to burst. Yeah. You see them doing it. It's, am it's amazing. It was an amazing feeling. But I felt like that the other day. My youngest daughter's three. She went to the bathroom on uh, Tuesday night without, on a real toilet, not on a potty. And I just went. I started crying. I was like, this is the most, <laughs> this is the stupidest 
thing <laughs> no. anyone's I was like, oh my God, that's it. Yeah, man, yeah. That's well, our last some... child on a potty. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, imagine how, you know, coming to work with you and contributing. I just, I really, really can't. Blow up, blow up with pride. Well, the film is brilliant.